You met so many cool people over the years. Is there, is there someone who stands out that you collabed with who was your favorite? That's like a, such a tough question. <laughs> who's, your favorite, who's your favorite kid, by the way? I like ones. the little one. You're like two <laughs> um, favorite person I've collabed with. You know, that, that's a. Uh, I don't know that that's super super tough. You know, there's like, I look at somebody like Roman Atwood, oh who like, do we miss know, like, Roman so bad? Roman Atwood, I, when I was like, I think literally I crossed a million subscribers at his house, but he reached out to me out of nowhere, and this was five years ago, and he's like, hey man, come to Ohio. That's where he lives, right? Yeah. Yep. And he's like, let me like teach you the ways. And this is when he was pulling four million views a video, and I was doing two hundred thousand, and it was just like the generosity of a guy like that and he did he taught me a lot and it's like about how to use it and then like you look at somebody like mr beast and like mr beast's approach like jimmy's approach to youtube i've never seen anyone like it. it's purely mathematical yep. it's like i mean he's his videos are really fun don't get me wrong there's a lot of, of spirit and creativity there too but his approach is entirely based on math and i don't know like what, what kind of fucking psycho genius <laughs> have you spoken can, to him I, like talk to, I talk to him all the time safe to say the most brilliant kid you've ever spoken to in your life? Absolutely. Yeah. Especially like like one of the first times I ever met Jimmy, like we hung out in New York City and he like, we're having these deep conversations about like the nuances of YouTube and, yep. and social implications of it and all that stuff. And he's like, he asked me like super frankly, he's like, how do I learn how to speak better? How do I learn how to be more articulate? And I understood completely why he was saying that and why he was asking that, but like, the the confidence it takes in a person to both like recognize the value and being able to be articulate and then like to actually speak up and ask something like that i mean my response was just like just read a lot of books like that's how i'm about fucking high school dropout i learned how to talk from reading books and like but that was just such like such a, a clear illustration of where his brain was. His self awareness It is unbelievable. Unbelievable, and his and his drive to be better. His drive to be better, and just like he's he is like a very good guy. He's very smart. He's so conscious of what he's doing. He has no accidents in the world of Mr. Beast. Like mm. he knows what he's doing when it comes to the platform. So like meeting someone like him is really interesting. Um, more broadly, like. And I'm sure you experienced some of this too, like in the crazy, like crazy daily vlog days. But like when I was at the Academy Awards and I was there because I was a YouTuber mm. and like a brand wow. brought me to the Academy Awards. I was like in the winner's lounge. Like after you win, you all go to this like one lounge. And I'm like down there, like walking around like goofy fucking vlog here. <laughs> and like this like woman comes up to me because she was like, you. And I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> and she like pulls up her cell phone and she's like, is this you? And she shows me a picture of myself. I was like, yeah, that's me. And she's like, oh. Of everyone here, my kids made sure I had to find you and take a picture of uh -huh. you. This is the fucking Academy <laughs> Awards. And this mom, who just won an Academy Award for producing a movie, is looking for me. And I just think like that is such a profound experience that like you're able to penetrate all the noise and connect with an audience, even if it may not be Academy Award winners, it's their children. It's like what a what a crazy entree into the world of entertainment that YouTube provides. You he, you've always kind of leveled up beyond the average YouTuber when it comes to the people that were willing to connect with you. I I met you in Nantucket years yeah. back. I was just a I didn't even have a YouTube channel at that time. I was just a fan. And you were there sharing the stage with I think like Deepak Chopra. Like I I don't even remember who else spoke at the the, the time you did. But what is it about you that has always um, connected you and been the person that the Academy Awards chooses, or, or, or you know, what is it that you do differently that sets you apart from YouTubers that vlog or YouTubers that make prank videos? Like, what, what, what's different about Casey Neistat? Um, you know, I don't, I don't know. I'm old for starters. <laughs> You've been like, doing it for a long yeah, time. Yeah, I just mean, like doing it. Like before YouTube, I was still doing it, and I think that like you know, like I started making movies and like. 98 or something I was like a teenager and you just learn and like before YouTube I had to find other places to like do my like make my videos yeah. and tell my tell stories so I think that like there is a recognition of how hard it is to succeed in other places you know like my HBO show which was in 2010 like you can find that show on YouTube um, like it's just a vlog yeah but it was way before vlogging existed but it was all I knew how to do so I put it on 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 HBO or HBO bought it then. Nice that brothers. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think that like, you know, and then I made feature films and I made like regular movie theater movies. Yep. And I worked for the New York Times making movies. 
But really, like, if you just zoom back and look at all that, it's, it's all just fucking YouTube videos. They just put them in different places before YouTube became what YouTube was. But I think through that process, I definitely sort of a, a, a achieved a level of attention from a very different audience. Like, people who tune into op docs, like opinion documentaries yeah. on the New York Times, are not your typical YouTube subscriber. And that's like, you know, for, for years I used to make videos for them. I think I did five or six videos for them over three or four years. So all of that, and I just think all of those years of experience just has enabled me to connect with an audience that I think is, um, is not entirely typical for your more sort of standard YouTube mm. audience. I think, I think your storytelling obviously oh, is, yeah. is one of your strongest suits, but your innovation, like your ability to adapt, how many people have been able to have the longevity career-wise that you have? You know what I'm saying? Like we see it, we're seeing it happen now. Some of these TikTok stars come in hot, go out even harder. The, the, the fizzle is so fast and it's been so cool to see you grow over the years. And it's, it's interesting to hear you say that Roman Atwood was sort of your kickstart yeah, uh, into vlogging. And, Cause I remember when I started vlogging, you had just stopped. It was, it was like you had paved the way after Roman, you have paid, you had paved the way for the, the wave of vlogging. That was me, Jake. Um, I'm not sure who else was crazy enough to daily vlog at the time. Cause as you know, that is incredibly toxic and, uh, well, shit, difficult, I, but I feel like I have to apologize for the world now. If I'm the reason. <laughs> started Easy. Vlogging. I didn't say you were the reason. I said you paved the way. Yeah.